Have you ever wondered what the outcome would be if you took the horrific nature of the wrong turn protagonists and transported them into the desert? Wait, what do you mean I'm just describing the hills have eyes? Okay, well, what about older? Fine, older than that. That's right. Bone Tomahawk is basically if someone said, what if we made wrong turn, but yeehaw edition. Just a quick heads up before the video starts, if my voice sounds like death to you, it's because I currently feel like death, and that's all I have to say, so have fun making fun of my terrible voice. The movie immediately begins with a good old fashioned throat cutting from Dewey and Captain Spaulding, otherwise known as Purvis and Buddy, as they're engaging in a rather non-Christian activity of brutally massacring an entire camp. After offing a bunch of people to steal their pocket change, they're forced to leave after hearing the sound of galloping horses approaching, as both of them happen to suffer from an extreme phobia of horses. While fleeing, they find themselves in some kind of burial ground, and after firing into the horrific thing known as foliage, Buddy's shot through the neck with an arrow before the taco bell hits and he proceeds to evacuate the entire contents of his bowels. And by evacuate the contents of his bowels, I mean someone rips them out. Someone so disgusted by Buddy for not having today's sponsor on his phone that they decided to make him a few pounds lighter for not having Raid Shadow Legends. Huh, <laughs> got ya. Explore the millions of champion combinations and master the countless tactics as you take on the raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles and PvP arena matches. To celebrate Raid's third year anniversary, I've put together a list of why Raid suits me well. The first thing being the easy to pick up and play nature of it all. I find it useful as a time killer between work, waiting for the kettle to boil, or when I've got a spare 5 minutes. Second being the sheer variety of champions on offer, meaning that there's always something interesting to work towards while still having the enjoyment of trying new things. And lastly, the plethora of different skills and attacks available, because much like the champions, there's always something new to try out to keep things fresh. This month, Raids just released a brand new faction, the Sylvian Watchers, with new champions Forest Elves, Ents, Druids and Fays. Raids also got a full lineup of events, along with a new season of the Forge Pass, where you can get your hands on some of the most powerful gear the game has ever seen. Also, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get your exclusive rewards in Raid right now. New players, use my link or scan the QR code on screen and get a free starter pack worth almost $30, a free champion Aina, and this in-game loot. You'll find your rewards here for the next 30 days only. Purvis, not exactly a fan of receiving the forbidden IBS treatment, makes a run for it before we then see 11 days later in the town of Bright Hope as we're introduced to a handful of different characters. Arthur and his wife Samantha, arguing about Arthur and his recent run-in with gravity, Bruder as he buys a drink at the saloon, and Sheriff Hunt as his backup deputy Chicory, which is basically just the assistant to the regional manager, but if it was law enforcement, tells him that a stranger, who we can see as Purvis, was seen burying some belongings in the ground before entering town. And with the sheriff having the mental capacity of a toddler, by god if there's any hole digging to be done, he wants in on it. Sheriff Hunt, not so happy about being excluded from the sand pit, shoots Purvis through the leg out of spite because bullets speak louder than words, but also after he tries to make a run for it after being confronted about hiding something. With the main doctor out of town, Bruder fetches Arthur's wife Samantha to come and deal with the bullet wound, and it would seem as if this has become quite a regular occurrence as someone's clearly been playing too much Red Dead Redemption and has got a little too carried away again. With Arthur suffering from a little known condition as an absolutely obliterated leg, he's forced to stay in bed and sleep as Samantha's left in the jail overnight with Purvis and the real deputy, Deputy Nick. Somewhere else in town, we see a stable boy going to investigate a commotion coming from the stable, and after opening the door, he has his throat cut before being shot through the head with an arrow. Because what's better than killing a person? Killing them twice. Arthur wakes up the next morning from his beauty nap to realise that Samantha still hasn't come home yet. Just as we see, the sheriff being told about the stable boy being mauled to death as well as the horses being taken. So after heading to the jail, the sheriff finds it completely empty with an arrow lodged into the wall. Purvis must have not had today's sponsor on his phone either as they followed him back to the town to finish the job. After the sheriff tells Arthur about the abduction, they all meet up at the saloon to devise a plan. The plan being, get Samantha and Deputy Nick back and kill anything that's in the way. Not Purvis though, they can keep him. With the help of Tall Trees, a local professor who is neither tall nor a tree, after inspecting the arrow, informs everyone that it belongs to a tribe that has no name or language and that they're a bloodline of violent cannibalistic inbreds. Sounds like the monarchy. He gives them directions to an area known as the Valley of the Starving Men, where it's told that they might reside. 
So Bruder, feeling responsible for getting Samantha involved, meets up with Arthur, Chicory and the Sheriff as they take off on their three day long journey. That night, Bruder sets up an alarm system to trigger if anyone or anything rolls into camp. And within a second of it ringing, Bruder, being more of a cat person, sits up and shoots dead a wild dog. Showing us that one, Bruder has a tendency for animal abuse, and two, he's a very good shot. And after another whole day of riding, while at camp, this time they're approached by two random strangers, and even after identifying themselves and dropping their weapons, Bruder, not being the biggest fan of dogs or people, shoots them down anyway. And after almost being shot by the sheriff for doing so, he explains that they're either scouts for a raiding party, or thieves. Which turns out to be right, because Bruder, with his cute and fluffy animal killing tendencies, after moving camp, wakes up with a man on top of him, driving a knife into his shoulder. And after Arthur wakes up and shoots the man for trying to kiss Bruder in his sleep, Bruder pulls the knife out of his shoulder and realises that they've taken off with their horses, before then learning that Bruder's horse resisted and they attempted to kill it. So Bruder throws the knife into the body of the dead man and puts his horse out of its misery, because once again, if it's cute and fluffy, Bruder's gonna kill it. Without the horses and a functioning leg, Arthur knows that he'll do nothing but slow the group down, so decides to head off as they pack up. They catch up with him and push on ahead, marking the route for him as they go. And after trudging through the blistering heat and climbing the rocky hillsides with one functioning leg, he manages to catch up with them as they're resting in the day due to their recent nighttime run-ins with people trying to kiss them in their sleep. After a nap, Arthur wakes up feeling feisty and punches Bruder in the face due to him making a flirtatious joke about his wife, who just happens to currently be held captive by a group of cannibalistic murderous inbreds who would really like to taste her insides, but not in the way Arthur and Bruder would. After hurting his already hurt leg, Chicory, having performed surgery in the Civil War, takes a look at it and realises that it's going to need to be amputated. But due to Arthur not exactly being too keen on the idea of losing a wife and a leg, they instead opt to set it, which apparently means smacking the hell out of it with a hammer for fun. And after Chicory's done giving Arthur a hammering, and not in the fun way, with him unconscious, they decide to take off, leaving him with a tincture of opium, and taking the rest in case they need it for Samantha or Nick, while once again leaving markings as they go, as if this is a Wild West retelling of Hansel and Gretel. But instead of being fattened up and eaten by a witch, you're brutally mutilated and eaten by a cave dweller. They hear a noise ringing out in the distance, and Bruder recognises it as a noise he heard back in the town on the night of the kidnapping, and they realise that it's more than likely a signal as someone spotted them. They then come across horse tracks, and due to the markings in the sand, discern that they're the ones stolen from town. And after walking deeper into the valley, we see that they're following the same trail that Buddy and Purvis did back in the beginning, before Buddy was rather rudely confiscated of his internal organs. They spot a cave in the rock face, and after checking it out with a telescope, they're suddenly attacked as Bruder and Chicory are hit with rocks and the sheriff shot in the arm with an arrow. After being beaten up by literal sticks and stones, Chicory turns and shoots one down, Bruder finds out the literal meaning of offering someone a hand, and not being able to go on without his favourite wanking hand, Bruder decides to go out with a bang, before proceeding to immediately not go out with a bang, due to suffering from an unfortunate case of not being alive. He takes the dynamite, smokes one final cigar, and realises that this tribe has implanted some kind of device into their neck that allows them to signal. So after pushing air through the dead man's neck, another comes running towards him, and it cuts away just as a gunshot rings out. Chicory shot through the hand with an arrow and bashed over the head, as the sheriff's tackled to the ground and violently strangled by a half-naked guy rubbing his balls and ass all over his chest. With a skid mark now down the front of his belly, the sheriff and Chicory are knocked unconscious, and Chicory begins waking up as he's being dragged down the path and spots Bruder laying dead with one of their weapons protruding from his face. A weapon that some would say is a tomahawk. A bone tomahawk. The sheriff wakes up in their cave and sees Samantha and Deputy Nick, as she tells him to do exactly what they want, otherwise they'll kill him. And not exactly wanting to become a sheriff hunt shish kebab, he obeys. She tells them that they ate Purvis, just as a large man enters the room, with even larger animal teeth protruding from his face. Nick's dragged from the cell and stripped by the dirty perverts, as the sheriff tries to break free to save him, before one of the tribe's people, who really don't like finger painting, approaches the sheriff and slices off two of his fingers. They give Nick the forbidden haircut, nail his scalp into his mouth, and flip him over before turning Nick into two Nicks. 
Some time then passes as Nick meets his identical twin for the first time, as we see one of them with a foot fetish, feasting on a gourmet slice of Nick's foot. After learning from Samantha that there's about 12 males, they realise that they've still got that extra opium, and decide to give the tribe one hell of a party. We then see Arthur waking up from his surgery, with his foot still indeed attached, and deciding that getting his wife back would be kinda cool, he sets off following the markings. But after having a little bit of fun on the suspiciously dry slip and slide, he takes a swig of opium to fight off the pain, before deciding that, you know what, Samantha can wait. It's time for an opium-induced nap. But as he's falling asleep, he's rather rudely awoken to something in the distance, as two men from the tribe, disgusted by his fashion sense, fire an arrow into his hat, thinking that it's his head. After killing one of the fashion police, he shoots the other one in the skull, but he just keeps on coming. Right before he's able to tell Arthur that his trousers are so last year, Arthur manages to reload and get the final shot off. He spots the modified neck on one of the corpses, before coming to the conclusion that it would absolutely be a great idea to go rummaging around through this dead man's neck and pull out this rather peculiar device in hopes of selling it on eBay later. Back in the cave, the sheriff pretends to be drinking from a flask, which in turn gets the attention of the cannibals, whose only experience of drinking alcohol thus far is sucking it out of the livers of their victims. After watching three of them swig various different amounts, Samantha says that one of them will definitely die, one of them will be unconscious for a long time, and the third one will not be affected. Dude's got an iron gut. Arthur then finds the bags belonging to the Sheriff, Chicory and Bruder, and knowing that Sheriff Hunt absolutely loves his designer bag and wouldn't be seen dead without it, he realises that something must have gone horribly wrong, so he decides not to head in the direction that they went. Taking the device pulled from the neck, he gives it a little taste and blows into it to draw them out, and as one comes running, he shoots him dead. But after crawling over to him, sporting his new Joker cosplay all over his lips, he realises that he isn't dead, so decides to rectify that. Back in the cave, they drag in a dead one of their own who drank the opium, and knock Sheriff Hunt unconscious as he attempts to rush them as they open the cell. Thinking that trouser pockets are overrated, they decide to give him a stomach pocket and slice open his belly, retrieve the flask dropped into the fire pit, and force it in to his newly acquired flesh socket. At least they were kind enough to cauterise the wound for him. Sheriff Hunt, laying on the floor with his new metallic appendage, gets shot in the arm with Bruder's repeater before they try to fire at his genitals too. But the gun doesn't fire, as they don't understand the concept of reloading it. And after hearing the sound of the signal, one of them leaves the cave, followed by the sound of a gunshot. Which apparently gives this large man the enthusiasm to learn how to reload the gun and shoot the sheriff in the guts at point blank range. But with his dying breath and pure unbridled hate for tall people, he grabs the tomahawk and slices off the man's foot with it, just as Arthur enters the cave and shoots him down, giving Sheriff Hunt the chance to kindly relieve the man of his cranium. After Arthur finds Samantha, Sheriff Hunt, knowing that this is the end for him, decides to stay back to finish off the at least three remaining males, as they have knowledge of their town, and they've kinda run out of stable boys to kill and horses to steal. So while leaving the sheriff in the cave, on their way out, they find pregnant females with spikes in their eyes, as they've watched one too many Big Will videos. And Arthur, absolutely loving the taste of a dead person's neck, blows the device one final time to lure any remaining tribespeople back to the cave, shortly followed by three distant gunshots, because screw these people three times. Before we finish things off, I'd like to give a massive thank you to all YouTube members and Patreons, people who every month continue to support this channel while getting access to the private Discord where they can see all uncensored videos. So if that's something that you might be interested in, consider checking either one of them out. So starting with the YouTube members, a big thank you to Laurie Resendiz, Cal Ballinger, Billy Bad Cables, Gary Braunbeck, Psycho, Cobra Redbeam, Excurticus, Mike Viorlik, Kyans Gaming, Peanuts, Goobs AU, Julie Knot 666, The Skeptic Eleptic, R. Mendez, Filippo Cordova, ASDF GHJKL, Mr. Denials, Flowly 2001, Bussy Bandit The Oki Way, David Gailanas, Dan Pop, Salty Seal, and Volta. And heading over to Patreon, a massive thank you to Dom, Hunters263, Rebecca Bits, Benz, A Dandy in Space, Martin Brannan, Jarrett CBs, Pascal Mathis, Richard McGowan III, Macy J, Chris, Dennis, Jerry McSendy, Ashley L. Wince, Christopher Butsky, Joshua Torres, Remy, Fire Goes Fast, Josh Brooks, Dyreem, Robert Zirwek, Dark Shiva, Josh Hannon, Billy Whitaker, Axel Not Chicken Imp, Jay Slows, Daniel Dickinson, G Source, Fatty Ghost, Miguel, 
Owen, Mackenzie Riley, Bryson, John Smith, Madrick, Andrew Miranda, Stephen Webber, Channing Mars, Arnav Singh, Michael Atikpa, Benjamin Bronson, Paul Bartelt, Rhys Heinrich, Toast is Hot One, Nasdan, Todd, Benedict Garum, FX666, AJ Castro, Robbie Walk, Nate Law, Alex FRW, Blake Bettis, Scorpexi, Ethan Holmes, DeAndre Fernandez, Callie Ballinger, Mitch Brandman, Sam Rasmussen, Averages 2, Newbie, Augustina, Geo Thornton, Cedric Spear, Salome Rios, and Matthias Jensen. So once again, a massive thank you to all YouTube members and patrons, and a big thank you to everyone else for watching.